In this video, we'll learn how to solve inequalities that involve quadratic functions. So for our first example, we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 greater than or equal to 0. And we're not going to solve this in the traditional way. We can't really isolate x here, so we're going to try something else. And what we might notice here is that we can factor this quadratic. x squared minus 4x minus 5 does factor. It factors into x minus 5 times x plus 1. And so what we're really asking is, when is the product of these two numbers greater than or equal to 0? Well, it depends on whether x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0, and it depends on whether x plus 1 is greater than or less than 0. So if we draw a number line, then whether or not x minus 5 is positive or negative depends on which side of 5 we're on. If x is greater than 5, then this number is positive. If x is less than 5, then this number is negative. Similarly, negative 1 on my number line here, if we're greater than negative 1, then this number is positive, and if we're less than negative 1, then x plus 1 is negative. So let's just make a little chart here. So here's x minus 5, and in this section of my number line, because x is less than 5, x minus 5 is negative. In the middle section of my number line, between minus 1 and 5, my x is still less than 5, and so x minus 5 is negative. But once we get past 5, x minus 5 becomes positive. Let's do the same thing for x plus 1. Since uh, in this section of my number line, x is less than negative 1, that means x plus 1 is going to be negative. But once we get past negative 1, x plus 1 is positive. So it's positive in this middle section, and it's also positive over here. So what does that tell me about the product of these two numbers? What does that tell me about x minus 5 times x plus 1? Well, in this section of my number line, that's the product of two negative numbers, which is going to be positive. And in the middle section of my number line, that's the product of a negative times a positive, and so that's going to be negative. And in this third section of my number line, that's the product of two positive numbers, and so that product is going to be positive. So if I want to know when this quadratic expression is greater than or equal to zero, I've figured it out. It's greater than or equal to zero in this section of my number line and in this section of my number line. So my solution is x less than or equal to negative one, less than or equal to because if x actually equal to negative one, then this number would be zero, and so the product would be zero or x greater than or equal to 5. If I were to shade these sections on my number line, then parts of the number line I'm looking at are this interval and this interval. So when you can factor the quadratic, this is the process we can use. What if we can't factor it? Well, in this case, we've got 2x squared less than x plus 10. So the very first thing that we want to do, just like we would do if we were solving a quadratic equation, is we want to get everything over to one side. So 2x squared minus x minus 10 less than 0. And maybe this thing factors, but because we've got a 2 in front of our x squared, it's going to be difficult to do so. Let's just use the quadratic formula. Let's pretend temporarily that what we want are the roots of this polynomial, that what we really want are to know when that polynomial equals 0. And that might not seem relevant, because what we really want to know is when it's less than 0. But the roots are going to help us do that. So let's use the quadratic formula. Negative b, so that's negative negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 1 squared, minus 4ac, 4 times 2 times negative 10, all divided by 2a, so 2 times 2. So that's going to be 1, plus or minus, when I figure out all that stuff under the square root, that's the square root of 81, all divided by 4. So that's 1 plus or minus 9 divided by 4. 1 plus 9, which is 10 over 4. Or 1 minus 9, which is negative 8 over 4. Also known as 5 over 2, or negative 2. So those are the roots of this quadratic expression. And so that means that I can figure out a rough graph of what this parabola might look like. 
we know where the roots are. We know that the roots are at 5 over 2 and negative 2. We also know that the coefficient of x squared is positive, which means this graph is going to be a parabola that opens upward. It's going to be a right side up parabola. So there's a rough graph of this curve. So if what we want to know is when this curve is negative, then we can see that this curve is going to be negative in between negative 2 and positive 5 halves. This is the part of the parabola that's negative. And that answers our question. So our solution is going to be that this parabola, this quadratic function, is negative in between 2 and 5 halves. So this is just another way to approach the same kind of problem. Once we know what the roots are, we can figure out when the thing is positive or negative simply by drawing a graph. Let's do one more. So let's solve the inequality x minus 4 greater than x squared. And again, we want to make sure everything is on one side of the inequality. So let's move everything over to the right-hand side to be with the x squared. So we've got x squared minus x plus 4. Because we've got a coefficient of x squared that's equal to 1, we might try to factor this, but a little trial and error we might not have too much success. So instead, let's use the quadratic formula again. Even though this isn't an equation, the roots, as we saw in the previous example, can be helpful. So let's go ahead and try to find them. So my x is going to equal negative b, which is negative minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, negative 1, minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. So that's positive 1, plus or minus, and when I figure out this stuff under that square root, negative 1 squared is positive 1, 4 times 4 is 16, so I'm going to get negative 15 under the square root, all divided by 2. But because we've got a negative number under the square root, that means that this quadratic function has no solutions. There are no roots. Hmm. So what does that mean the graph of this quadratic function looks like? Well, if we were to graph it, we know that this parabola never crosses the x-axis. But we also know that since the coefficient of x squared is positive, that it opens upward. So that means that a really rough sketch of this, we don't exactly know what this looks like, but a really rough sketch is that it's going to look something like this. It's an upward opening parabola that never crosses the x-axis. And so the question is, for which values of x is this thing less than 0? But we can tell that this parabola is never less than 0. So that means that the solution is no solution. There are no values of x that make this inequality true. Now, it just as easily, if the inequality had, going the, had been going the other direction, this solution could just as easily have been all values of x, that everything we plug in makes the thing positive or negative. So you have to be careful when we don't get any roots. You want to make sure that you get an, a relatively accurate picture, and that picture is going to help you make sure you get the right solution.